Welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara O'Brien. Joining me this week are Ed Gamble, Olga Koch, and Tom Allen, Glenn Moore, Hugh Dennis, and Angela Barnes. We start with a round called Picture of the Week. I show the panel a topical image and ask them to tell me what's happening. So, what's going on here? Why did she decide to moonwalk to the lectern? <laughs> <laughs> Is it Theresa May proving that she can leave something? <laughs> Has someone just shouted, we'll be glad to see the back of you, and she's taken it far too literally? <laughs> All I know is she's going to go into her house right now and take off her bra. <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely the first uh, urge to say, yeah. but it's like, oh, this thing, this thing. Uh, you like, don't know what it's like. I don't, I honestly don't. And, I'm and I do, and it is difficult. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think I think what she said was she was like now I can listen to my favorite music the country and western I love <laughs> I, yeah. I think of some of those great country songs and I begin to cry as well <laughs> It does look frighteningly like the door is still closed <laughs> That would have been great if, during the speech, they changed the locks. <laughs> <laughs> you just see some yeah, bin oh. bags flying out. No, all of the, 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 the letter flap opens on the inside and all of her clothes are just yeah. pushed out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is, she just, is she going inside to regenerate? <laughs> oh, it's quite clear she's going inside to meet Chris Berg. <laughs> <laughs> Is she going in to say, oh, I can't wait to watch some daytime TV like that, Jeremy Kyle? Oh, no! <laughs> All the times to be out of work. No. <laughs> so at least you got line of duty. Oh! <laughs> it's a game of... Oh! <laughs> it's a big breakfast. <laughs> oh! <laughs> This is, of course, the first Mock the Week she has had time to watch since June 2016. Yes! Oh, so, uh, so if she's watching, I hope you realise how supportive and caring we have been over the last three years. <laughs> <laughs> um, does anyone know what the story is? Is it Theresa May resigning as Conservative leader? Absolutely right. Yes, thank you very much. And... Yes, this is Prime Minister Theresa May outside Ten Downsley, having just announced her resignation. May will step down as leader of the Conservative Party on the 7th of June, but will continue to serve as Prime Minister until the Tory leadership contest has been concluded. This seemed to be the biggest question we had. Did you feel sorry for her? Well, I feel sorry for anyone who was forced to make an announcement standing in the middle of a road. <laughs> She tried to look a bit sorry. I mean, I prefer to her resignation to Cameron, who just looked smug. He looked like he was just giving back a hire car. To <laughs> <laughs> be a one that he'd driven through a river. <laughs> he full of shit. His here, later as peeps. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I am originally from Russia, and I can't deal that resignation is even an option for a leader. <laughs> <laughs> Vladimir Putin, then this is an option. This is on the table for him. Because you, you'd have preferred 12 hours of piano music played uh, on the state broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then a fun. sweeping 96% victory. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm glad she's not like Peter. We were one week away from her riding on a horse with no top on. <laughs> <laughs> what do you need? A lectern? I don't understand that. You could just you could do it with a bit of paper. If she's got a lectern, it always makes you think she's going to make an announcement with a glove puppet. <laughs> Making an important policy announcement. Every and time, to help me is monkey. <laughs> <laughs> Every time you see something behind the lectern, you yeah, think, what context. university did you go to exactly? <laughs> City University. Yeah, City <laughs> University. Yeah, it was, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, it really was, yeah. Cambridge. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. are you also the head of Caius College or whatever? <laughs> I think you'll find it's pronounced Keys. <laughs> the... I'm terribly sorry. I just, I just couldn't let that one go. <laughs> Was there any tempering of, of dislike for May's policies with the, the humanity of the moment for on this side? I think. I mean, you, you sort of you can feel sorry that she was in a dip, difficult position, but I think I feel more sorry for the people of the country. <laughs> 
it was an interesting way to cry as well. Like, just at the end. I've never seen anybody cry at the end when they go, the country, oh, I love! <laughs> Isn't, isn't as sort of, you know, it's not like they do in films, is it? You never saw that in a wartime film. Like, by the way, oh, I love you! Yeah. <laughs> Maybe she just can't just say the word love. So even if she's at a restaurant, she goes, this is a type of curry I love. <laughs> so what is it about our, our, our distinctive style that we'll miss most, uh, Theresa May? Uh, Ooh. Well, it's hard to say. Isn't it? No one knows what she's going to do now, but all I know is she's leaving on the 7th, Love Island begins on the third. Oh. <laughs> There's a late addition to the house and no one's got someone to couple up with, then suddenly in she comes. <laughs> comes. <laughs> People do seem to be making fun of the dancing quite a lot, and I always feel like, well, that wasn't really the main problem. No. Like, no, I mean... <laughs> It's not that, like, no-one goes, oh, I can't stand that Robert Mugabe, but have you seen his Macarena? <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's weird that it was her emotion that everyone focused on at the end, given that mm. that was literally the thing that most, most obviously absent in the years that she was mm. there, the human well, sense well, maybe of empathy. She, she, sense she saved of... it all up, right? She, she just saved up all her emotion until that one last moment. That's why she sounded so weird. <laughs> just years built up and then suddenly... <laughs> it sounded like the spirit leaving her. That's what it sounded like. There was a ghost in... <laughs> She's been haunted all this time. By the ghost of Margaret Thatcher. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I found it weird because that's exactly how I sound when I come. Oh. 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 The, oh. Oh. the country I love! <laughs> I'm very patriotic in the sound. Yeah. Yeah. Or like any guy I've ever dated, she just can't pronounce the word love. Oh. <laughs> oh. It's a joke. <laughs> She's not totally without humanity, though, of course. We remember the running through fields of wheat. Fields of wheat? Naughtiest thing she's ever done. Naughtiest. I did feel I... a bit bad for her on that as well, though, because I thought, well, she can't exactly turn round and go, oh, the naughtiest thing I've ever done. Oh, well, I did once do heroin. <laughs> <laughs> It's a little naughty. I was at a party. I just, you know, I just. Uh... Russell Brand said, come for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I, mean, I used to go around on a moped stealing mobile phones. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty naughty of me, I guess. Uh, I punched an old woman in the face. She died. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's skip through some fields of wheat. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> uh, Who threatened to upstage Theresa May at this, at this most important moment <clears throat> in her career? It was the um, lectern man. Yeah? Oh, he was so fit. <laughs> <laughs> I think he gives a very unrealistic indication of what the average sound guy looks like. I mean, I think, especially up the sound guys at Mott the Week are amongst the ugliest people I've ever... <laughs> if I were him, I wouldn't have been able to resist putting a little bit of super glue just on the top of that, so Theresa May would have had to do that speech and then carry the lectern. <laughs> 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 I mean, people were yeah. so excited about him. It's as though they were just thrilled to see someone on the steps of number 10 just doing their job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, think he, I, I think he can officially be described as a, as a MILF, which is mechanic I'd like to fund for a leadership bit. <laughs> <laughs> and he's running under the slogan, a sound guy. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's so <laughs> uh, the end of the point yeah. the top. Oh, baby! Now we play a round called Don't Let the Door Hit You on the May Out. <laughs> <laughs> this game involves Tom Allen and Glenn Moore, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand-up challenge. I launch the Wheel of News, and wherever it chooses to stop, one of our performers will step forward and talk about that subject. OK, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. And the topic is growing up. <laughs> <laughs> That's offensive. I think my parents always wanted me to be really, really grown up. Like, I remember uh, years ago, my parents coming into my room, confiscating all my toys and saying, you're too old for teddy bears. And I was so upset, I just stormed out the house and I just drove. <laughs> I'm a proper grown up now, though, and I can tell I'm a grown up because of my pajamas. Like, you can all tell you're grown ups because of your pajamas, because, like, when you're a kid, I'd wear pajamas that had like immature things on, like Disney characters and stuff like that. But now I'm a grown up, you know, I wear pajamas that have got more mature characters on, like the cast of Atonement. 
Yeah. I mean, my 11 year old cousin, we've both got Harry Styles pajamas, but hers say One Direction and mine say Dunkirk. <laughs> Obviously, slippers is the only exception to this. Slippers only ever have grown-up characters on because it's only grown-ups who wear slippers. No child in their right mind is wearing slippers, and if your child is wearing slippers, keep your creepy Jacob Reese mock child away from me. <laughs> <laughs> when I was growing up, all I ever wanted to be was I wanted to be an astronaut. I, can th I thought I could be an astronaut. I've only got two weaknesses, being vague and another weakness. <laughs> No, I can be an astronaut, but the problem is, if you tell your teachers you want to be an astronaut, they say, no, you don't need to study that. You need to study Shakespeare. The only way you can become clever is if you study Shakespeare. That's not true. Shakespeare didn't study Shakespeare. He went on to become Shakespeare. Shut up, shut up, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> I'm just annoyed at myself, because I didn't realise to be an astronaut, you've got to be good at science, and I didn't listen during science, and now I don't remember any science. Like, I remember the basics. I know stuff like if you put a tooth in some milk, you will lose your job at Cravendale. <laughs> annoyed at what I do remember and what I don't remember, and I find it unfair. I find it unfair that for seven years of my life I had to study physics every single week. I don't remember any physics. Yet in 2003, I saw half of Johnny English. I still remember the name Pascal Sauvage. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, that was good. OK, that leaves us with Tom. Let's spin the wheel and see what your topic is. The topic is exercise. <laughs> <laughs> Also a picture of me. <laughs> yeah, I'm not very good at exercise. I joined the gym. I joined Virgin Active because there wasn't a Virgin Passive. <laughs> and I, ha I found the whole process very intimidating. Like, when you go in there, you're confronted with all the uh, cardio area, like the cardio area. They call it cardio because that's where you go to have a heart attack. <laughs> And then at the other end, they have what they call the free weight section, the free weights, which I have no business being in because it's for the bigger boys. <laughs> <laughs> the bigger boys go there all day. They're lifting things all day, all day, trying to get big arms, trying to turn their arms into legs. <laughs> It all really started at school. Like, I didn't like doing PE at school. What would happen is, after assembly, one class would have to stay behind in the hall because they'd be doing gym. And I never found out who Jim was. <laughs> but the worst bit was if you had to use the apparatus! <laughs> and the apparatus basically was this huge, terrifying cage which had to be buckled to the wall. <laughs> it was so terrifying. And older children would have to come in who'd been trained by the army. <laughs> And they'd come in and they'd untether its bonds, and they'd pull a lever and it would lurch out and it would swing out and these huge, terrifying arms have to be buckled to the floor, otherwise it would just swing out and kill everybody. <laughs> and they had all these bars and ropes and chains. It was very much like a weekend I recently spent in Berlin. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right. Our next round is called, if this is the answer, what is the question? On the board are six categories. Olga, which category would you like? Politics. OK, politics it is. The answer is 29. What is mm. the question? How many Tories joined the leadership contest since the beginning of this recording? <laughs> <laughs> is it how many years has Theresa May aged in the last <laughs> year? <laughs> is it how many seconds Ed took to choose that shirt? <laughs> I'm getting fashion tips from a man who has a shop at Big and Tall and someone from Victorian times. <laughs> oh, please. Do me, do me, do me. <laughs> you don't want me to go there, Glenn. Yeah. I just thought I was having a bit of laddie bounce. <laughs> <laughs> this is what people do all the time on these sorts of shows. And then it's I always throw... about the banter. And then I throw it back at you. That's how laddie bounce works. Do I have to throw it back again? No, it's fine, please. <laughs> Please did use the word laddie bands. Sounds like a Scottish singer from the 60s. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would definitely have We're a recording. in Hogmanay, <laughs> the musical stylings of laddie bands. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Glasgow, I love you. Yeah. <laughs> Is it if you make a Jamie Oliver 30 minute recipe, after how many minutes does the recipe go into administration? <laughs> A bit older, how long does it take so solid crew to go? <laughs> Is it how many A's are in Dominic Raab? 
<laughs> is it how many days would a man have to live in a woman's body before abortions were legalised and there was no tax on tampons? <laughs> <laughs> Right, sisters. Yeah. Yeah. It's a BBC balance. I'd just like to say I disagree with everything Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> Is it the highest the UK has ever come in Eurovision? <laughs> Is it, Dara, what is the winning number in tonight's Mock the Week raffle? <laughs> is, it the age, is it the age all of Leonardo DiCaprio's girlfriends go missing? <laughs> <laughs> is it the number of seconds it takes Dara to go through hair and makeup before the show? Love you, Bunch! Love you, Go on, Dara, say something horrible back to him. Dara, call him, call him a Lego figure geography teacher. <laughs> Dara. I just think when you brush it all forward, it's clearly obvious. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, no. Uh, does anyone have the correct answer? Yeah. Is it how many weeks after we leave the EU will we politely ask to join again? <laughs> <laughs> Is that how many people the Brexit Party got elected into the European Parliament? Absolutely right. Thank you very much, Sean. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Yes, the question I was looking for was how many seats did the Brexit Party win in the European elections? Mm. This is news that Nigel Farage's Brexit Party topped the polls in every region of the UK, apart from London and Scotland, and in Northern Ireland, where the party did not stand. Who cares? Being an MEP right now with Brexit's coming, it's like getting a Christmas job at Debenhams. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think we should wait for them to all go to Brussels and then remove freedom of movement so they can't get back in. <laughs> Amazing about him, though, is that he has, you know, the Brexit Party really has no policies on anything except Brexit. Yeah. Does it? And the, and the Labour Party has policies on everything except Brexit. <laughs> <laughs> they, should, they should get together. Do you remember when Jeremy Corbyn was at Glastonbury <gasps> and everyone was going, like, yeah, Jeremy Corbyn, He's going so mad on. for him, and now no one cares about him? He, that's how the Zootons must feel. <laughs> <laughs> He's had a big week, though, hasn't he? He has had a big week, yes. Why is that? It was his birthday and he, could, he couldn't work out whether to commit to a party or not. That was the problem. <laughs> <laughs> he did have a party for his 70th. Um, the main party was at his gaff, but um, Diane Abbott had everyone for pre-drinks on the tube. <laughs> <laughs> I, I th the problem with a Corbyn party is it would be really, really difficult with a birthday party because you'd have, like, half the people at the party want to go paintballing and the other half think that the Jews run the media. <laughs> <laughs> what should we get him for his 70th birthday, do you think? I don't think he'd want presents. I think he'd be quite giving, and, like, but not in, like, a fun way. Like, the cake would be carrot cake and it'd be rubbish. And then, like, <laughs> it'd be a party bag, but it's, like, a Hessian sack that's got, like, the Communist Manifesto and a flat cap. Mm. <laughs> like, a little box of sun-made raisins, but you look closer and it's Mal's little red book. <laughs> I quite, I quite enjoyed the next, the next morning. The first thing I read on Twitter was someone going, it was a victory for Remain. All of the Remain parties, when you add up every single one of their votes, yeah. beat the Brexit party. You can't do that. You can't just turn around and go, London won the Premier League. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> what will happen is we'll end up leaving, then in a decade it'll all be terrible, so we'll ask to go back, and they'll let us back in, but only if we start doing weird European stuff, like giving kids wine and eating paprika crisps. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, you can come back in, but now your national sport is handball. <laughs> <laughs> really? You want to stop eating handball? OK. <laughs> oh, 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 i got to go. Oh, this is not sport. <laughs> oh, you grew up in Europe, right? I grew up in Russia. Oh, but that's so... They're in Eurovision. I mean, so is Australia. OK. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, the turnout for this was so low, Russia didn't in even interfere. <laughs> <laughs> You got links to Russian political things, isn't you? You talk about this on. How do you think I got on Mark the Week? <laughs> <laughs> In other news, who's favourite to replace Theresa May as party leader? Boris uh, Johnson. Boris, you've got yeah. to worry. Like he's been quiet for about six months. We knew he was up to something. <laughs> the Tories are likely to select him, aren't they? Because it's up against Farage, and you need to fight Titan with Titan. Of it, you know, it's like the plot of Godzilla, but with bell ends. <laughs> does end up being Boris, I find it so weird that he will sleep in the same bed that Theresa May used to cry under. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's 
so sad. <laughs> I know, but whoever comes in after him will definitely change the bed. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be, it, I can imagine him putting in one of those race car beds. <laughs> I think if he does become Prime Minister, it does mean that Gary Busey will be in Series 7 of The Crown. <laughs> 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 the, so that's then we've got Rab, we've got Gove, uh, uh, Esther McVeigh. Esther McVeigh is oh. running. Uh, this is uh, Tommy Fury. <laughs> this is Tommy Fury, he's running as well. He's the 20 year old boxer from Manchester, he's running <laughs> yeah. as well. Uh, um, who else is running? I think we've got, uh, is it Yoanda Biala? She's <laughs> running. She's <laughs> Wait a minute, hang on, oh, we may have mixed up. This is, uh, this is Love Island. Sorry, uh, this is Love Island. We're on at the same time, so it's very easy to mix up these two competitions. Yeah, They're both yeah, running yeah. during the summer. They're both going to be huge. Yeah. There'll be eliminations. We'll narrow it down. Do you know the best thing about Love Island? Is Go it? on. Oh, oh God, Ed Gamble's in it. Look, Ed yeah. Gamble's in it. <laughs> wow. Oh. Yeah. Look at Ed oh. Gamble. Ed yeah. is. Uh, <laughs> You're, you're the first people to bring it up. Oh. It's not like I've been dealing with 24 hours of shit on Twitter for this. <laughs> <laughs> and it's yeah. another reason for you to take that shirt off. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and I know people think it's just one picture. Let's have another look at Ed. Uh, there! Hey! It's not me! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, He's... God, I wish I did look like that. <laughs> Is he like you as a person, though? I, I have never met him. <laughs> Why would I have met him? Do you think... Where's he from? <laughs> I... <laughs> Come on. If half the country said to me, oh, you look just like this person, probably Dara, <laughs> then I'd, I'd want to meet them and find out about them. I'd, I'd at least, like, look up one thing I about I can't meet him, Tom, cos he's on fucking Love Island. <laughs> I can't always yet. meet them easily. I've never met Louis Theroux. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fair point. Yeah. Okay. I, don't want, I don't want to have the party where we meet the people we look like, cos I'm not sitting in a corner with the megabook. <laughs> <laughs> Again. Again. Uh, oh, here we are again. Oh, how you doing? <laughs> Doppelganger websites where you upload your photo told me I was 92% Patrick Swayze. Even <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Patrick Swayze's no longer 92% oh. Patrick Swayze. Oh. <laughs> At the end of that round, the point's going to Tom Olgan. Now we come to scenes we'd like to see. So if everyone can make their way over to the performance area, please. I'll read out this week's topics and then we'll see. <laughs> What our panelists can come up with. OK, here we go. The first subject is things you wouldn't hear on a history documentary. Now, while this may look like an ordinary car park in Leicester, this is actually the final resting place of my hymen. <laughs> <laughs> it's on this very spot in Dallas overlooking the president's motorcade that John F. Kennedy is going to die. <laughs> And it was here in this field that the fighting started. It was Glassbury 2015 and some prick nicked my tent. <laughs> the Trojans had been fooled by a wooden horse. They would never bet on the Grand National again. <laughs> I'm walking on the outside of this castle because of my National Trust lifetime ban. <laughs> It's 1856, but it'll be 1903 before the southern train arrives. <laughs> Henry VIII liked his wives to be athletic, and that was her downfall. She wouldn't run, she wouldn't walk. She would simply... Anne Boleyn. <laughs> And so the king appointed a viceroy as a replacement for his regular roy. <laughs> <laughs> we talk a lot about Winston Churchill's achievements, but we don't talk nearly enough about that ass! <laughs> <laughs> 
it's 10.66, so that can only mean one thing. I shouldn't have bought my digital watch from a market. <laughs> Before dawn, the carts would all come out to collect the bodies. That is, until the day that Prince Philip finally handed in his driving licence. <laughs> As the door was opened, he uttered the words which would start the Russian Revolution. Excuse me, he said, is Lenin? <laughs> this was a time before Sigourney Weaver, when everyone else had to weave their own Sigourneys. <laughs> Incensed that both Henry and Edward had become king, Thomas the Tank Engine plotted revolt. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we talk a lot about Richard the Lionheart, but we seldom talk about his brother, William the Leopard Scrotum. <laughs> And the tyrannical leader took his own life in the bunker. It's what I hope for every time Trump goes golfing. <laughs> Isambard Kingdom Brunel died as the most famous, stupidest named person in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Today we look at one of the key figures of the Ming Dynasty, your mum. <laughs> OK. The next topic is... Unlikely things to hear in hospital. We need a drip. Somebody get me Michael Gove! <laughs> <laughs> now, the good news is your blood results have come back clear. Uh, the bad news is blood shouldn't be clear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, yay! £350 million! Pounds. Great news, thanks! <laughs> <laughs> Time of death, Pim's o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if you squeeze his drip really hard, <laughs> he gets an erection. <laughs> I'm a junior doctor and I get paid enough. <laughs> Erectile dysfunction, you say? Um, does it hurt when I do this? And does it feel amazing when I do this? <laughs> <laughs> now, you have pneumonia. Would you like to keep that or gamble for the big prize? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I remember when my dick looked that young. <laughs> I'm the leading gynaecologist in this hospital. I work in the cafe, but I'm a bit of a legend. <laughs> Would anybody like a hand? I've just found a hand. <laughs> you have cancer. Sorry, you're having a cancer. Your baby is due July 15th. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the good news, it's not spread. It might be jam or peanut butter. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> I see you. No, can you tell me the way to the ICU? <laughs> um, we've had a look at your X-ray and what we've found might alarm you. Um, there's a big skeleton living in your body. <laughs> Yes, I think it's a curvature of the upper spine, but it's just a hunch. <laughs> Good news, Mrs May, we managed to have your tear ducts repaired just in time for your big speech. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the end of the point of the time. All game A! That's the end of the show. This week's winners are Ed Gamble, Olga Koch, and Colin.
Commiserations to Glenn Moore, Hugh Dennis and Angela Barnes. Uh, thank you for watching. I'm Darby. Good night. Fiona Bruce steers the conversation over on BBC One. Question time in a couple of minutes. And for a funny topical look at modern Britain, Ramesh Jaman, check out his new series, The Ranganation, on BBC iPlayer.